You ever make a schedule for a project that goes out the window the second you start it? Well, that was me making this game. Originally this was supposed to be made in 3 hours for a game jam that happened 2 months ago, but then I kept adding stuff and here we are. Started out with a Microsoft whiteboard and a dream. I was trying out this thing where I write down all of my ideas, however dumb they may be to be able to come up with game designs more systematically. The theme for this game jam was off the shelf. I'm pretty sure people can't play drinking games with how much I say the word game jam in my videos. But besides trying to make a game that followed that theme, I also wanted to work on my visual effects skills. So I had the goal of making at least one particle system that I've never made before. This is when I started running out of steam on the brainstorm, so I checked Twitter real quick for some more inspiration. And you know what's always trending? Apparently cats. It was a Saturday, which makes it a catter day on the internet, a term which I'm not sure I've heard before, but that's probably a lie. And since I absolutely freaking love and hate my cat with a passion, I knew I had to make a game about him. After a bit of a back and forth with myself and considering making something like an Angry Birds clone on a shelf, I finally settled on the gameplay loop which you saw in the beginning of the video. Since I thought I would be finishing this game in 3 hours, I tried to think about the biggest challenges I'd face, which were mostly to do with time consuming tasks like making an artificial intelligence for the cat and drawing cat animations which the first half an hour of my actual working time was spent on. After that, I planned out the gameplay more in depth, since the point of this game jam is that we've got as much planning time as we want. At this point, I knew I wanted the cat to run along a shelf, knocking stuff down while the player tries to hit them with a spray bottle. So the obvious next step for me was to draw some stuff to populate the shelves, like vases and a spray bottle. With an hour of time gone just like that, it was time to start working on the actual game. I started out by drawing some simple shelves and making a tile set out of them. Tile sets allow us to quickly create level layouts out of terrain chunks that we use often. After making a layout of how I thought the game would look like, I began writing some code for the cat. This boy had to be smart, and by smart I mean an absolute unit. He had to be able to jump from shelf to shelf, do some sick dodges and everything in between. For now, going straight until he falls off was okay. He needed some decorations to knock down though. The way I decided to execute this was by having the vases as standard rigid bodies that were held up by the shelves until the cat touched them. The next logical step for the cat's AI was to let him jump. And the entire time up until now I was overthinking this, guessing I'd have to make the check for when it's walking off the ledge to jump, but in the end I realized I could just place jump markers around the level, which 100% saved me a bunch of time. You know what will save you a bunch of time? Joining my Discord. It's hard to find the right game dev community for you, but if you have a group of people that are passionate about the same thing and are willing to cheer on your progress, your work becomes a hundred times easier. Link is in the description, come say hi. By now, I finally got to work on my goal of making a VFX particle system which would be the water spraying out of a spray bottle. The bottle would rotate uncontrollably and the player would have to time their button presses correctly to hit the cat. Particles are like many game objects that are controlled by the GPU instead of the CPU and there is even a separate programming language inside of Godot that allows us to fine tune them. What I wanted to do for this game was to learn how to make these particles collide with the cat. And since I would pretty much have to learn a new programming language to do that, I realized that the measly time I had left in the game jam would not cut it. Uh, looks like a bit of a theme in the game jams I do, but whatever. I participate in them to learn and not to actually finish them on time. So while eventually we would be able to make the individual particles invisible after they hit the cat, 
there was no way to communicate back to the game that they did, and that just has to do with how code runs on the GPU. As a workaround, I made a circular collision shape that had the same direction and velocity as the particles themselves. To make sure that the player couldn't just spam the spacebar and machine gun the cat down, I put the spray on cooldown so you had to time it right. I usually don't enjoy working on the user interface in my games, that's why it's hot garbage, but this one was apparently the start of a UI making streak. I wrote down all of the bugs and issues I was aware of at the moment since it feels nice to check stuff off a list and got to fixing them. One thing that always feels weird for me when I work on the UI is how I make all of the buttons and progress bars in a sprite instead of creating a UI theme inside of Godot itself, which would probably save me a lot of time in the long term. It's really just a bad habit I picked up pretty early on and haven't got rid of yet. But hey, if anyone knows how to create cool pixel art themes in Godot or knows any resources for that, I'd appreciate any recommendations. The next question was, was I ready to do some level design? The answer is probably not, but I powered through that one as well. Those little Godot icons are actually jump triggers that turn invisible once the game starts. It was almost time to make a new list, but the last thing I wanted to do was kind of familiarize the player with the game mechanics before throwing them in, so I added a working spray bottle to the menu and wrote an explanation of what's happening. With the first list complete, I made a new one that focused way more on polishing the game and adding visual finesse like screen shake, explosion particles, and the water particles actually getting caught on the cat. Something that's really nice about Screen Shake specifically is that once you implement it once, you don't need to rewrite it ever again. Personally, I have this starter project folder that I just copy paste every time I start a new game and as Screen Shake code I stole from Game Endeavor like a year ago. In addition, Screen Shake is just a really nice effect that adds a lot of weight to whatever just happened on the screen. Next was probably the most challenging part of the whole project, figuring out how to make the particles collide with the cat. And it's not even that the code I wrote was anything special, it was more so that I was intimidated by Godot's shading language and that debugging it is kind of difficult. That has to do with the fact that there's no way to print anything from the shader slash particle code because this code runs like millions of times per second on the GPU because it runs for every pixel on the screen. So my game can communicate with the shader code like I can tell it where the cat is located, but there's no way to send anything back. Since unfortunately my code didn't work right the first time, I had to figure out how to debug it. The way advanced shader wizards debug their code is usually with either specialized tools or by messing with the colors of the pixels they are drawing, according to my research anyway. If you have any suggestions about better ways of doing this in Godot, please share them in the comments. But the issue I was facing was that I needed to know the coordinates of where the particles were located. Since I was dealing with two different coordinate systems in my game, one for the level, and one for the spray bottle because it was moving separately from the rest of the level, I wasn't sure I was sending the right coordinates of the cat to the particles. What I ended up doing was changing the color of the particles once they pass an X coordinate threshold to figure out where they are located exactly. Probably wasn't the brightest solution, but it got the job done. Then, after I figured out how to correctly check for collision with the cat, I turned the particles that did invisible. One thing that would be really cool to do is to have splash marks left on the cat for a bit, but that was outside of the scope for this one unfortunately. Next thing I wanted to do was to have the vases break into small pieces once they fall off the screen, which I was able to do pretty fast thanks to a video from the Play with Christopher channel on YouTube. The basic idea was that you randomly take a piece of the whole base sprite to be the texture for the particle, and after that it was just a matter of adding some vertical velocity, rotation, and gravity to them. I feel like one major issue I have in my games is that there's just not enough what's called game juice, also known as game feel, also known as the reason why you play League of Legends a thousand play hours after you've had the last shred of fun you'll ever have in the game. 
Wikipedia defines it as the intangible, tactile sensation experienced when interacting with video games. A lot of game developers that know about this way more than I do say that game feel is about good feedback and making the game satisfying to play. So cool VFX, sound effects, crisp movement, freeze frames on enemy kills, even screen shake, anything that enhances the player's sense of agency in the game world. Since it's one of the main things that differentiates a good game from a great game, it was really nice to focus on polishing the parts of a game that I generally don't give enough attention to. After adding a death animation for the cat, I wanted to work on a level end screen that has stats with scrolling numbers and a 3 star rating system, since this game kind of has a mobile vibe to it. Not having any time constraints here was definitely blessed because neurotic game developers like me generally think that anything that's not adding more content to a game is a waste of time. And I feel like for solo projects, it's really important to develop an appreciation for all aspects of a game, be it a menu or the UI or whatever else that might be boring to work on. So to get scrolling numbers in the end screen, I ended up using Godot's built-in linear interpolation function, or LERP for short, which allows us to get from one number to another in a certain amount of steps depending on the inputs we give it. So I basically told the menu what the final value of a stat will be, and it changed its current text each tick of the game process until it reached that value. I honestly don't know what it is that's so addicting about scrolling numbers in game and screens, like what's the psychological reason behind most arcade games opting to do it that way? For slot machines it makes a lot of sense, but this is just a video game. After getting that end screen down, it was time to get some sound effects. I had the sound effect pack that I think I got from Humble Bundle laying around collecting dust, and it seemed to somewhat fit the game, so I went for it. One new thing I tried this time around was alternating sound effects that repeat often to keep them from annoying the player too much. Like, I'd have two different effects for the vases breaking, and I think it worked out pretty well for me. By now my mind was mostly on wrapping this game up and putting it out there ASAP, but having only one level didn't quite feel right so I was trying to figure out what kind of mechanics I could add to make the second level different from the first one. Something else that bothered me was that the level was looking really empty still. My solution to that was to add a bunch of decorations for the background like furniture and whatnot that can scroll with the level. I decided I wasn't going to spend too much time on this one so I scaled up these sprites by 3 and got away with drawing less pixels. Work smarter, not harder. Just kidding, that was a bit lazy of me. With the decorations done and placed around the level, the game was looking a lot less barren. And back in the level design camp, I came up with the idea of a health slash speed pickup for the cat. It will be like a can of beans that the player doesn't want the cat to reach, so you have to hit it with a spray before the cat gets to it. Then I realized that I probably need to add a next level button to the stat screen, so I awkwardly tried to move things around until I settled on the solution of just smushing everything together and making the tab thinner and longer. To keep the interactivity going, I made a quick tutorial screen for the new mechanic of level 2 and made it basically an unskippable tutorial because we love those and moved on to designing the layout for the second level. For this one, I started to experiment with the draw order of the decorations to have some of them in front of the cat and others behind to give more of a 3D impression. Isn't it funny how we consciously decide to make a 2D game and then do everything in our power to make it seem more 3D? This is when it occurred to me that the code that I have for determining how many stars a player gets is actually hard coded, and since the way I made them scale is with how many vases are left after the cat is gone, it was impossible to get 3 stars on the shorter level 2. After fixing that issue by having different star presets for different levels, there were two last things I wanted to do for this game. First was having some VFX and sound effects on the canned food pickup, and the second was just to have a short third level as a kind of a credit screen. 
Overall, I feel like this game ended up being way better fleshed out than I ever expected it to be, but it also definitely took way longer than I signed up for. Do you guys make games? And do you go on these development tangents like I do? Let me know in the comments. If you want to test out the game, the link to the browser version will be in the description. I'm also kind of wondering if this would be a good game to figure out how to do mobile with. Maybe something for another video. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, join my discord, and I'll see you in the next video.